Now, if you're anything like me and you love YouTube and you're a musician, which I'm assuming that you are, you've probably heard of or seen Jacob Collier before. But for those of you who haven't, Jacob Collier is a multi-instrumentalist and Grammy award winning music producer. And he's got a really unique approach to his live performances where he kind of invites a lot of participation from the audience to collaborate in real time with various tones and sounds. And in partnership with Native Instruments, he made a free plugin based on this audience participation using recordings of it from venues that he's performed at all around the world for you to use in your own music. And it's got a really unique and interesting and complex sound. And the plugin is super useful. So I want to go over some of its best features so you can use it in your own music. So let's take a look. So this is Jacob Collier's Audience Choir. And you basically just need to have Contact 7, which is also free, and a Native Instruments account, and you can just download this plugin straight away. So this is what it looks like. And when you start to play some of those, these keys, it's pretty cool. Look at what happens in the background. And it's basically lighting up different performances that these recordings have come from. So you'll see on the bottom here that there's a series of blue keys, and that's those are kind of all the playable keys. And you can play chords with those just as you normally would because they're all single notes. Now, besides the single notes from the this blue zone here, we also have these yellow keys. And, and these are like basically percussion hits that, that they did when he was in different parts of the world. Also, can we give just a shout out to how cool some of these animations are? They also have some chants and stuff. <laughs> I believe this stomp too, he said was like the, the coolest stomp he'd ever heard. It was from a, a venue in Copenhagen, I, I believe. And it had like, he said that the floor was kind of hollow and so he got this really cool uh, stomping sound out of it. So those are included in the plugin as well. And then this orange zone over here, these are actual chords that were recorded at some of those venues. So instead of single notes like we had before, they're chords. And there's all kinds of different ones in here too. So it has a little bit more of an organic feel because the chords were also obviously being sung at the same time rather than having samples layered together like you would in the other section. Another really cool part is you can change the vowels really easily and mix between them all. So if we had just like a basic chord here. It's really fun to mix and match those based on whatever genre genre you're working in. So, for example, like if you're working with some R&B, like you might want to use the mms or or one of the softer ones. Now, speaking of softer as well, you can change some of the dynamics. So, this kind of like filters out the sound a little bit and makes it a little bit uh, a little bit softer. So, you can see this little slider here. This is essentially the mod wheel though. So, if I bring this to we'll leave it at maximum and then we'll bring it down to here to show you what it sounds like. So, Another kind of cool feature too is that it has this looping function so you can have it automatically jump between some of these different vowels. So let's try that. Um, if we hit loop and we hit the play button, right now it's on the forward to backward mode. We could just go forward. So let's try, let's try just forward and see what happens when we hold a chord and press play. And you can also change the speed of it. And then up at the top here is where you can change the actual pattern that it's using. So uh, if we did like full circle, you can see that it will go through, cycle through all of them.
Or if you wanted to do something a little bit simpler and uh, more direct, you could just do the ooms, and it's pretty cool. Like you can kind of fade between them nicely. Another pretty cool feature is this chord generator that you can access by clicking chord generator. And then let's change this to major. And when I start to uh, hold any one of these single notes, they become chords. Just to make things a little bit easier, you could do something a little bit spicier like a harmonic minor, right? So if you just want to get going and get started right away, it's a, it's a pretty easy way to do it. One thing that Jacob Collier talks about with this plugin is that it doesn't reward you for playing complex chords that I guess are very close together, like very narrow ones. So if you played something like... It might sound good on the piano, but it's not going to sound good like with this particular plugin. I just think because some of the recordings are very rich and complex harmonically. So the more notes that you add, the more kind of stuffy it feels and more like there's too much going on. So that's just something to keep in mind. It kind of forces you to keep things simple, which I kind of like. Now, the next question that I think about is, what's the best way to use this? I really like to just start with like some sort of a, a drone, right? So you go like just use maybe octaves or fifths or whatever. So if I just held out... So you kind of hold those notes out and then you grab another instrument. You could use, you know, whatever you're most comfortable with. I'm going to grab the guitar and just start laying down some chords on top of the drone notes that this real choir is singing for you. So let's lay some stuff down here. So yeah, you can just have fun with it and uh, and continue to make some chord progression just building off of that sort of drone sound, which I really like, which is a very basic way to use it, but I just love the kind of complex backdrop that it gives whatever it is that you're adding to it. Another way too is just to start like you normally would with, uh, with these as the chords that you begin with. So, you know, you, you do something like this. And then obviously just build the, the drums and the bass off of that, right? One of my favorite ways to use it is just to add a little bit extra flavor to like a, a beat that you're working on or a loop or just some chords even. So if we had something like this and we were just adding like a nice choral element to it. Or maybe even an octave lower too, right? I really like the flexibility of the different vowel configurations. So if we wanted to add something more soft, we could just move it to the ums and then move the dynamic slider down a little bit and just soften up the sound and make it a little bit longer for a different feel. So yeah, this is like a really cool addition that I think everybody should have in their music production arsenal. I mean, it it adds a, un I'm always on the lookout for those unique plugins that add something different to the mix. And this definitely does, especially given the uniqueness of the circumstances of how it was recorded. I think it's so cool just like taking little pieces from different venues all around the world and putting them all together in a way that's really fun for you and me to use in our own compositions. And if you have had a chance to use this plugin, let me know what your thoughts are down below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, happy music making. Take care and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.